Grazie mille. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for coming this this late night for <laughs> and uh, I will talk about the this topic here, nanoscale digital based analog process. And uh, the idea is is to do analog stuff uh, using digital building blocks, in this case logical gates. Um, this is the outline of my presentation, motivation, the OTA, which will be uh, described uh, here, and uh, some simulation results, another digital based analog blocks. Uh, we, we're going to pass through the state of the art of a recent literature and some conclusion. So, um, before we go to the technical stuff, I would like to break a little bit the ice here because we are tired, we are on the end of the day. I'm Brazilian, so I'm from this city here, so we can see there are many nice places, and then we can see that the minimum temperature of my city is 16 degrees, so for me now it's very co cold outside. So, but it's a quite big city, 1.5 billion. So, I like soccer, MMA, I have two kids, but uh, I'm not so creative, you can see that I just use Google Translate to, to give the name for my kids. So, Pietro Filippo. And uh, I knew that I would be in Italy since 99. 1994 because we won the against the Italy. <laughs> it was very nice. And uh, before to arrive here in Polito, I work in the companies. So uh, I was an analog AC designer. I work in this receiver here for Zigbee. And uh, I work in RFID uh, chips also. And uh, in parallel, I did my master in this university here. Universidade Federal Rio Grande do Sul, where I won the best uh, master's thesis in microelectronics. So this is my background, and I decided to move out to here because I was doing the same thing there. So I'd like to change, and uh, since I, I have done a good job here, so I could continue research. And uh, now, for the presentation, technical, uh, we are following the, the big trend here with IoT. And we, we know, we are aware that there are many applications in IoT. And uh, several applications is driven by ultra-low power systems. So if we can design ultra-low power systems, we can arrange several new applications. And uh, so far, the technology which has been chosen to do all those stuff here, it's been uh, CMOS. So in the, in the end, we have to interact with the external world. We're going to need analog stuff to, to translate the analog signals to digital signal to make the process. Eh? and uh, sometimes stimulate back using analog signal. However, uh, there are two main issues that analog guys have to handle. Uh, one issue is to technology, it is in a technology perspective. We can see that over time, uh, the technology is, is being improved and uh, is also being improved for digital circuits. So we can see in 50 years, if we compare a processor with ADC, which there are many analog blocks inside of, analog gear blocks inside of DC, we can see that the technology is, is being more, more how would they say? 
more useful for digital stuff than ADC for analog stuff. And uh, it can, we can see in this publication from TSMC, we can see that a memory, SNO me memory, it, it has been improved at three order of magnitude. Uh, if you compare if the analog stuff remains more or less the same. So as a conclusion, if you, we could do analog stuff using digital stuff, maybe we could get the advantage of this scaling uh, as well. There are a lot of uh, other issues that I would like to point out, like, uh, you know, we have a design flow for the analog stuff, and we have a specific design flow to do digital circuits. And uh, we, we are aware that it's more automatic, this, this flow here. And uh, you can do fast, so you can achieve time to market uh, uh, better. And uh, sometimes we can, we can get a reasonable performance. On the other hand, if you do analog design flow, the labor is very, very intensive because you have to do the layout manually, you have to do all the uh, numerical simulation, so on and so forth. And uh, in the end, we, we, we spend a lot of time doing that. So if we could also, one more time, if we could translate all those blocks here inside of this design flow here, we could also get the advantage of automatic portability and the time to market. One, one topic that I still have doubt is about the verification flow because you know we have design flow here for digital, but we have to verify, and the digital flow is very automatic as well. But analog flow, we have to, to do simulations, time consuming simulation because we have to, to solve the key of all rules of the circuit. So it takes time to simulate and verify your analog design. In summary, in my introduction, we have uh, a application, uh, IoT application. You don't need, this. there are main applications that you don't need high performance, you have just to sense something. And uh, so if in the end we have to design our system, there are gonna be some, some analog stuff here. If we, if we could translate all those analog blocks using digital stuff, maybe, we can, as a consequence, we could get advantage of the, the small scaling and uh, we could also use the digital tools. So, the first block that comes to the, our mind when we think about analog design is the OTA or amplifier and the inside of amplifier the first stage we know we, we did the electronic one so we have a differential pair and uh, right here the question is uh, what is the purpose of this differential pair in the beginning of the of the OTA. Uh, the, the main goal is to amplify the differential signal and reject the common mode signal. If, if we analyze it carefully, this thing here, this topology here, we are doing exactly this. 
when we have uh, common mode variation, there is no current differential current in the output. On the, on the other hand, if you, we have a differential signal variation, we're going to see some current varying at the output. So my question is, could we, could we re replicate this reasoning digitally? If we, we could do that, we could use uh, logical gates and we could use uh, digital tools and we could uh, get uh, the advantage of this CMOS scaling, et cetera, et cetera. This is the, the reason behind of my first year of research. And uh, we can start with this simple thing here, which are two buffers. So we have this characteristic function of the, the buffer. When we put in the in the when we put in at input of the buffer a value below the three point or threshold point here, we we get zero in the output. And uh, if we put a signal which is larger than the three point here of this buffer, uh, we would get VDD and output. Very simple, but uh, how I could get the information of the common mode signal here and the differential, differential signal here. If we analyze carefully, you can get this information here. When uh, we have, uh, for instance, uh, this situation here, when the input is higher than three point, the threshold point of the buffer, we have the information about what? The common mode. We know that common mode signal is higher. And uh, since we want to do a differential pair, we have to get rid of or attenuate this signal in order to amplify later the differential signal. The same thing happened here, but for the below case, below the three-point three case. And uh, after some trick that I will introduce later, after the, the common mode is fixed, we can amplify the signal. We could, oh, sorry. We could think in this way here while the VDD is larger than minimum VDD that can make those things here work. Uh, if the, the output signal is one zero or zero one, we should amplify the differential signal. And uh, otherwise, if we don't have those situation here, we should call uh, use a kind of strategy, secret strategy, we should cancel, we should uh, fix the common mode signal. That's the idea. Let's suppose that we have already fixed the common mode signal. I will show in the next slide how to do it. But once we have fixed the common mode signal, we can put this logic here. We can replace those clouds here to this lo simple logical here. And we can charge and charge the output capacitor amplifying the signal as we want. Okay, very simple logical, very simple way to describe the circuit. But if we are in this situation here, we should sense this common mode signal from the output of the buffers. And we could also do this logic here to charge the charge these capacitors, these capacitors here. And we use this some network. We could 
cancel the commode signal. And uh, it's, ve it's very nice to see that using this simple reason, reasoning, sorry, we can get an amplifier. If we put this uh, feedback network here, which we can find in a classical electronic book, uh, in the use uh, of the shell components, we can see that if we put a gain of two, we can get the, the we can get a real amplifier. This was this has been published by Professor Provetti, which is my supervisor here. Uh, in 2013, just showing that it really works. Uh, when I start to do my PhD, we start to ask ourselves about could we, could we integrate this? Of course, this is a could integrate, we could put an ASIC. But the doubt was could, mm -hmm. could we outperform this? We could, we could achieve state of the art results if you integrate. Uh, if it, it, another question was, we could get uh, something robust. Uh, and uh, after this year, we, we did uh, this integrated version here. And uh, the interesting thing, it was that we could achieve state-of-the-art results and uh, for, uh, for, for this uh, situation here, low VDD application, which there are many applications in IoT that we wouldn't have too much energy, so we would have a low VDD and uh, low supply voltage. And, uh, and uh, we, we saw that this, this technique technique here would drive not too much current. And uh, we also tried to, to, to answer that question that I mentioned before about the robustness of the circuit. We found uh, some troubles here, but uh, we saw that we could uh, calibrate this thing here in the first invert of the buffer. And um, in order to replace this resistor here by logical gates, because I'm, I'm saying that we are using digital stuff, we could use an inverter as a pseudo resistor. So we would need just to include this new uh, logical gate in the library and use it. So we got this total wire here which is not too much if you compare with uh, amplifiers made by, made using analog techniques. And uh, we can, s we can we're gonna see some simulation results, what we have done so far. For the first characterization, we use uh, the voltage follower configuration. And uh, if you put 300 millivolts of VDD in peak of Faraday of load, and uh, the peak-to-peak -peak signal here in the input, we can see that it is really it, it really is a voltage follower. It's buffering this input to here, and uh, if we zoom it, zoom the curve here, we can see that it's working digitally. Each step, which uh, the common mode signal is fixed. There is a interval, time interval that the differential signal is amplified. Uh, we, uh, as I said before, we also investigate some uh, PVT issues, and we found that we, if we fix the the three point of the first inverter of the buffer, we could fix this thing and we could get the same results. So this is just showing that there is a problem and th th this problem has to be fixed. 
Now more simulation results, we can see that uh, as we are working in 300 millivolts, we couldn't get too much bandwidth. So, but there are many applications in IoT that this kind of bandwidth is so low. This is the frequency response of the, the amplifier and the THD, the total amount of distortion. One interesting thing here that we start to investigate the behavior of the amplifier for several supply voltages and uh, we find out, so for each VDD we found uh, power consumption, a new, G, a new uh, bandwidth for this amplifier and the one interesting thing is that the row, the row, the row one point that uh, we could find the, the minimum energy. So, like it happens in digital circuits, there is a minimal uh, energy point. Since we are processing our signal digitally, in this digital amplifier, there is a VDD, specific VDD that we can get the the, the the maximum efficiency of the circuit. We use this figure of merit here to 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 say that, which is G, uh, bandwidth GBW times uh, the load capacitance over the power consumption, the current. And if we compare with the state of the art. Uh, ultra low voltage operation transponder amplifier we can say that this topology can get the same VDD we were able to to drive the largest uh, load which was 8 picofarad consuming the the lowest power the lowest silicon area as well and we were able also to achieve uh, the best figure of merit and uh, we can see here the comparison among among others others work here in the same uh, uh, the same uh, research which is low voltage OTA and we can see that we are in the state of the art for all the samples after calibrated. Another thing that we have investigated was that we did the same circuit in a finest technology for a nanometer and we saw that we could get further uh, better results, performance. And then we show that we can get advantage of CMOS technology scaling. We won the best uh, student paper, present these simulation results in the conference, in sex conference, this year. And then we also publish another OTA in this conference here, NOFAS, and uh, where we use PWM to calibrate the circuit because we saw that the critical problem of this topology is the, the PVT variation uh, on, the, on the buffers. We sent it for tape out, so top secret. And uh, we did this with uh, National University of Singapore, who paid the publication. And I uh, used this PDK here, 100 nanometers. We put several other, several other uh, topologies, which can be presented in the next speech presentation. <laughs> and uh, now I am preparing the test bench to measure all the 
all those digital days or days. Uh, but there are many other blocks, analog blocks, which can be done using digital gates. Like uh, this is the idea of the time analog block design train is to put more digital circuits than analog digitals, analog circuits, sorry. So this is a kind of trend. And uh, for instance, in our group, we, we have developed a comparator. Uh, which, were, which has been done not only using digital stuff, digital logical gates. We have also done uh, DC. So, more details you can get in this application, but just to show that uh, there are many analog blocks which are being done, which are being done use a digital flow. We can see uh, ADC also. This, this was not done by our group, but it's very interesting work here, which uh, successive approximation ADC has been done using only digital blocks. And uh, LDO, we also, we, we, always need to regulate our VDD for several reasons and uh, why not we could do this digitally and this publication here is very interesting it was uh, this video has been done using only digital stuff but we need uh, here a, a transition which is not a logical gate but the rest is digital. This is another uh, analog block with uh, voltage reference, and uh, it has been proved that it can also be done using a digital circuit by my supervisor here, and he used also in this paper, paper uh, of the shell components, and we can see that over temperature there is a stable voltage reference. Just to illustrate that there are main blocks, main analog blocks, which are being designed in a digital way. So in conclusion, uh, what did I do in this first year of the PhD? We did uh, digital OTAs and uh, we were able to prove it by simulation so far that we can get good results in certain bond wire conditions like uh, low VDD and uh, now we have sent to tape out we are about to we are about to receive the, the samples and the measures and after that after that we're gonna measure and uh, this is my next year task. And uh, thank you very much. This, uh, I, I forgot to say that I'm doing joint degree uh, with the uh, Universidad Federal Adventist School in Brazil. Any questions? <laughs>